Hey, what is going on guys? It's Brandon Botto here and I'm actually editing this video right now in the background. And I just want to let you guys know that all of these clips have been recorded back in September of 2019 and it is currently like June of 2020 or almost June. I think we're in May right now. Either way, uh, it was recorded a really, really long time ago. Therefore, I'm very awkward in the verse quite a few clips. And this is also like four or five videos all edited into one video just to get all of the uh, RX-7 videos caught up so that whenever I start making more videos on the RX-7, you guys actually know where we're at and how we got there rather than just, uh, you know, just popping in again and not showing this stuff. So I'm just uploading all this stuff to get you guys all caught up if anybody is following the build at all. Uh, but besides that, it's pretty much just back to normal after this. I do have a couple more videos that are going to be coming out, but as of right now, the FRS is not done yet and it is not going to have a video for at least another couple of days. Hopefully by the end of this week, we'll end up getting it back and start having videos pump, pumping out on that again. But for the RX-7, I just wanna get you guys caught up and kinda of put a video out just to kinda of fill in the gap between that, between the last FRS video and the new FRS video. So it just helps out and works out well. So anyways, let's get right into the video. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brando Bondo and I'm continuing the video from yesterday. It's actually like six o'clock already. I've been working a little bit on the uh, car but not very much today. I've been pretty much procrastinating. I uh, don't really have to get it done till Thursday and I'm hoping to get the subframe out and swapping some stuff in but it has been raining all day today so I don't know if you guys can tell but it's pretty wet out there and when it's wet it's not very good for paint so I'm painting inside the garage which it's taking forever because there's so much moisture in the air. So I've been painting these, um, I painted two of them already, so they're going from this white, and what I'm doing is I'm masking off the uh, logos on the Mazda and the Nissan logos. It's really hard for you guys to see because these, my camera and these lights are just not getting along, but pretty much that's what they look like now, they're pretty much all just white, and what they're going to be looking like afterward is like this all pink with the white lettering so I'm gonna go ahead and get to that you guys can watch that um, like I said the camera is having a really hard issue with these lights uh, something with the frequency of the lights and the camera are just not getting along so I'm gonna have to figure something else out for lighting in future videos but we're just gonna have to deal with it for now and I'm gonna go ahead and paint these and then while I'm while it's drying and everything I think I'm gonna clean up the uh, the garage a little bit and try and get it ready for me to pull the subframe out and make some room for it. Alright, so it's been a little while since I picked up the camera, about a week to be exact since I picked up the camera. So a few things have been done, but I haven't made as much progress as I was hoping to. It didn't get done last weekend. I hope so this weekend because we're getting really, really close to being done with this car. We just need to pretty much put everything together after after we're finished painting things. Speaking of painting things, last thing, last thing we gotta do to paint is um, we gotta pull this. Why is this so dark? Well, hopefully this is a little better. Um, we gotta pull the subframe out and we're going to take the subframe and paint all of it white. It is already painted black, but I just it, it's something I just wanna do for myself. So then we got the diff painted, we got the transmission painted, which the transmission looks really good actually. We still gotta work on that though, so I'm kinda mad I painted it already. Uh, the engine is actually super clean now. It is all nice and sparkly and all that. Not sparkly, but like shiny. And uh, yeah, it's about as clean as I'm going to get it before having to take it fully apart. Uh, we got the front knuckles back. But yeah, you can see the front knuckles back. And it is cut one inch back. So that should get us about 50 to 55 degrees of angle. The rear is uh, also painted. Well, that one's painted. The other one needs to get painted. It's over back there. That's the last things that we need to paint. And then from there, pretty much everything else is painted. We've got the calipers painted, all that stuff. You guys will see that when we put it on the car because I'm too lazy to go grab them right now. Uh, you guys probably can't see me because it's probably blocking out all the light. Um, but yeah, besides that, we got some new tires. And we got my gold 18s back. I think I might paint those white as well because I did have to do a repair on one of them. Aside from that, we're almost there. We're almost there. we got to put the engine back together. Emissions is all deleted. All the painting is almost done, and I think we're going to go underneath, clean up the bottom side, and put rubber all over it. We got about two weeks from now until the event starts, so we got to get this done by like this weekend or next weekend, so we'll get started on it. So it turns out one of the clear coats is matte, and the other one is, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell on camera, but 
The other one is very glossy. And this one is not so glossy. So yeah, I accidentally bought the wrong clear coat the second time around. I bought clear the first, or the glossy clear coat the first time, and I accidentally bought matte clear coat the second time. So some of them are going to be matte, some of them are going to be glossy. On white, it doesn't really matter as much, and especially with most of these parts being underneath the car, I don't really care too much. But when I do these wheels, I want to make sure it's going to be glossy, so I'm going to have to buy some more glossy uh, clear coat when I do that. But the reason why I'm painting these is because I let one of my friends use this, and I already repaired this as much as I could. So it's pretty flat now, and it doesn't look as bad. But it used to protrude about like this, and it was like pretty much bent straight out. And uh, yeah, so I had to hammer this down, and it's pretty much pretty much flush again. So I'm going to have to repaint all the wheels and make them look all the same because I'm one of those people that I don't want my car to have one thing that looks really shitty on the rest of it because it makes everything else look really, really shitty if one thing looks shitty. You guys probably can't even see me. But the uh, yeah, I'm going to repaint those. I'm probably going to do glossy white on those. And these boys are coming together pretty nicely. So that one's all nice and white and clear coated already and this one is all matte. Or, uh, primered up so I'm gonna do one more clear coat or one more coat one coat of white on the one that's primered and then I'll probably do another one later and then do clear over it and while that's drying I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull the subframe out so we're gonna get to that and yeah I also put new bearings in these rears so the new rears also have new uh, new wheel bearings and the fronts also will get new wheel bearings so don't worry about that so I can't remember the last time I picked up the camera, but uh, I think it was when I was pulling the subframe out, and the subframe is already out, it's already painted, all nice and white and everything. Gas tank is currently being painted uh, like a rubberized black, or like kind of brownish, depending on where you're looking at it from. The top should be getting pretty pretty much hardened right now, and then we can go and do the bottom side of that. Um, the transmission, I bought this return spring, because uh, these return springs go bad all the time and basically what they do is when you go in the first gear it'll like your center when you go in the first gear it stays over here and when uh, you pull a, or you're supposed to replace the spring every now and again because it just breaks or something but basically mine was staying like this and I looked in there and I was going to pull it out and put this new spring in but when I looked in there the um, spring was actually moved over into this little like divot here and I don't know if you guys can see it but right on the edge there is where the spring is supposed to be I basically just took a screwdriver and popped it over on the other side and now whenever I go to the side it just returns so that was an easy fix easy return spring fix uh, I'm gonna keep this this spring just in case I ever need to replace it actually um, but I now I know to check just the move it over sometimes because maybe it just springs out if you like let go too quick or something I'm not sure anyways motors pretty much put back together um, the only thing oh wow that's really close I'm really sorry but the motors pretty much put back together I do got to take the intake uh, manifold off again and I'm gonna pressure test all of it when it gets back into the motor so that's why there is there's actually tape still on the intake manifold I'm trying to mock up the intercooler piping to figure out how I'm gonna get uh, no intercooler to go. I'm pretty much going to need like a 180 or like 120 uh, pipe right there, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. The motor's pretty much ready to go into the car. The only thing it needs is accessories and the fuel needs to be tested. It also needs um, it also needs hose clamps. Uh, my camera keeps cutting out. I don't know why. So hose clamps on that. I'm finishing painting the axles. And we're going to put the subframe on uh, all together and put it on and the gas tank should be going on. Then the gas tank will go on and we'll pretty much turn the car around, put the motor in, put the transmission in, all that stuff, and we'll be good to go. Hopefully we can get a first start tonight. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to go and get to it. I don't know if I'm going to talk over this. It's pretty much just going to be a uh, full time lapse. So yeah, we're going to get right into it. So I ran into a bit of a last minute problem. Um, I was putting the uh, rear knuckles with the hubs on the uh, rear. and. As you can see, this is actually very harsh, or like very hard to move. Bearings must got set in improperly, and it causes it to catch in some areas, and it pushes it out a little bit, which would cause a wobble. And we're gonna have to go get these bearings fixed. 
These are brand new bearings already in there, but they must got pressed in sideways or something and I didn't do it right. So I'm going to go take it to a real shop and have them do it. It's going to cost a lot more and it kind of sucks that I just spent like 50, 60 bucks on bearings and it still needs new ones again. So it's going to be another like two, $300 probably. We'll get back to it afterward. I can't do anything on the car until then because I need the subframe put, the, put back together and the rear brakes on so that way I can flip the car around and take the motor out because I don't have enough room up front there. So I'm gonna end today's Labor Day, so pretty much every shop is closed. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can find a shop to fix it today. If we can't fix it today, we're gonna have to come back tomorrow and hopefully get everything done between the time I get home and the, uh, the time I go to bed. So we're back, it's a new day again. Uh, it's been like, we've been filming this for like a week now, so the, the video is gonna be either really long or a lot of pieces are going to be cut out and it's going to be really choppy. Either way, uh, I should probably just edit this video. Either way, um, we did end up getting those new bearings in. So I went ahead and just bought two new bearings and I pressed them in with a hand tool rather than using a hydraulic press. Last time I did, I did a hydraulic press and I must have pressed it in wrong or something. They're spinning a lot more freely now. We got new bearings in there. The old ones are actually really, really beat up and the old ones were only like a day old. I just put them in there, but I somehow messed it up. Doesn't really matter. Pretty much what happened. Uh, not what I'm not now with that anymore. Um, pretty much it rained last night, so there's water all over the place. You can see from the differential all the way out, still dribbling on that side. There's it's all over the subframe, everything. So there's water all over in the garage now, and it's gonna make for a really really annoying day because now we got to deal with with that. Luckily nothing got wet that wasn't supposed to be wet. And I'm very lucky I moved a lot of things out of the way because there was a lot of things over there. Um, pretty much we're going to start putting the subframe together now. Hopefully we can actually get it done today because the last time it was held up by those bearings. And anything else that we need to do or should, we should be able to get it done now. Uh, I just finished my job. I have two weeks to finish this with no interruptions. So hopefully I can get it done. It shouldn't take too long. And yeah, we're going to get into it because I've been talking way too long. So it's a new day, again, I feel like I've said that way too many times in this video, but pretty much yesterday you guys saw that I finished up the rear end of the transmission, or the entire rear end, put it all back together, and I was going to go ahead and put that in along with the gas tank and then put the drive line in and then start the car, move it back, but the problem with that is the drive lines are actually a lot different. So on this side, the splines are different on the turbo side and the differential side is a different size. So pretty much I can't use any uh, either one of the drive lines unless I have the corresponding differential or transmission. And the only way to do that would be to put the NA transmission or differential into the back or put the Turbo 2 transmission in. If I do the Turbo 2 transmission, I got to do the Turbo 2 engine. So the problem with that is I don't want or I don't have room to do the engine and transmission and I don't have the time or I don't want to put the differential back in just to move it out, move it back, and then drop the subframe again and put the new differential in again. So my option is to, or my plan to fix that is we're going to put all the stuff back into the rear end and we're going to push the car out, push back in backwards, and the, in order to do that we got to do the front suspension stuff. So right now I only have, or I have the original suspension on this side and I have a different knuckle on the other side already. So we're going to go ahead and take this out and we're going to put the modified knuckles in. I'll show you guys the difference between the knuckles once I get this one out. And I already measured the uh, angle of the stock, um, the stock angle of the stock knuckles. We're going to go ahead and show, I'll show you the modified compared to the stock ones and show you the angle difference afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we got the front uh, knuckle out. As you guys can see, here is the new one. And if you look at where the tie rod end goes, it is much shorter than the old one. Um, these are actually for opposite sides, just for comparison. So, put this closer, you can definitely see how much longer the stock one is. We took about, ooh, I should not have grabbed it by that, but we took about an inch off of the arm, and that should get us quite a bit more angle. So we're gonna go ahead and install this, and then we're gonna start working on the gas tank and everything. We won't be able to test this until I get some new bearings because me 
being dumb, I didn't realize that there was actually two bearings for the front hubs. So I ordered this bearing, which is looks very similar to what it is, but as you guys can see, it is really short or really big for the uh, front. Turns out this is actually for the inner um, part where the hub actually has a outer and an inner. I actually ordered the inner uh, bearings. I wanted the outer bearings. So I gotta go to O'Reilly's, buy some new ones in a little bit. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get back to installing the knuckle. I'll go pick those up when I get a vehicle to go. And uh, once I go grab my paycheck and all that stuff, I might have to wait till tomorrow, but um, hopefully we can finish this car pretty soon here. So, all right, so we're back. I installed the knuckle on the side and along with it, I went ahead and put the four lug hub in because I did have one of those outer bearings and I was able to put the four lug hub on, the same one that I used to test this. So I tested the angle with it and I measured it at about 51 degrees, um, which is a little bit better than stock. Stock is about 35. So we're getting about 16 degrees more with this angle or with the cut knuckles, which is pretty good. It's gonna help a lot, but the issue right now that I'm running into is that the wheel hits in the back with the 18 inch wheels, which I'm running 235, 40, 40 18s, I think, or 45 18s, one of the two, and it's just still hitting in the back. Pretty, or it's pretty low for profile tires. My best, basically my best option is to either go to a 17 inch wheel or a 16 inch wheel. I really don't want to go to 16 because they're really small. I don't have any 17s, so I'm gonna have to figure something out for this next event because I'm not gonna be able to pick them up uh, in time. So, pretty much my options are to use, or my the best way I can use it is with the 18s and just come back to it and adjust later and just use these for now. Um, besides that, I don't see any other issues with the knuckles. I just gotta wait for the bearings. So, we're gonna go ahead and install the rear end and the gas tank in the back, and we'll call it good uh, for the night. Upload this video and we'll get started again tomorrow with the bearings and hopefully we can turn around and get the uh, engine out and put the new engine in. I seen a lot of shit I shouldn't have, but never forgot it though. Brothers on the corner selling crack like it was not a though. Walk inside my kitchen baking soda all up on the floor. Cody's banging on the dough while gripping the 44. I was just a youngin', but this type of shit I seen before. Y'all see a white boy, but my daddy a Negro. Half breed motherfucker grip the mic and he flow. I just wanna spread love, they want me to bleed slow. I just wanna keep the peace.